Why aren't you making money in your boutique? Why? I'm gonna tell you, on this live, I'm gonna give you the three biggest mindset, tricks, hacks, blocks, that are blocking you from making more money. Stay with me. If you're watching the replay, say hello. I'd love to hear from you. You know, I try to respond to every comment um, because I love my community. I love my people. Um, men and women, I love y'all. <laughs> so say hi. Um, and if we haven't met yet, I'll introduce myself. My name is Emily Benson. I am a retail educator, boutique coach, consultant. I am the host of the Booster Boutique podcast. I'm a number one best-selling author of the Ultimate Boutique Handbook, and generally just a fun kind of lady that likes to talk about boutiques <laughs> because I'm a nerd about retail and retail money, and I love it all. So thanks for joining me. I'm gonna quickly share this live stream in my Facebook group called The Fashion Truck Tribe. If you're not in it yet, I invite you to join. It's free, so much cool information, such a great community. I feel like we have like 50 comments on every post and it's not a place where you'll find drama, complainers. Um, we just don't do that. So welcome. Okay, let me just share this. Hi you guys, hi Georgia and Abby and Lolo and Alexandra. Hi, Kim. I'm going to get into it real quick here. Um, join me now. Okay, sharing on my computer. Here we go. Who's loving my new denim jacket? It's like a light wash. And I got some new earrings because I was in LA last week. All right, we're shared. So here's the deal. If I didn't say hi, I'm saying hi. Brie, yeah, we do support each other. Jennifer, Anne Marie, Daisy, Jen. Hey, Jen Dennis. Chelsea, hi. So happy to see you guys. Hey, Sherry. Um, Sherry, I saw your email. I, I, I'll get to that. Today was crazy. Um, hi, Tara. Okay, so listen, you guys. Here's the deal. These are the three, top three reasons you're not making money in your boutique. And as always, I have my notes. So if I look down, I'm just looking down. So this first thing is based on, we had a post last week about what's your favorite Starbucks drink. And like there are plenty of you who are like, oh, I just drink water or I, I don't really like Starbucks. That's cool, okay? That's one, like whatever. But then there are a lot of people that were like, it's too expensive. And one woman, God bless her, okay? If, she's, if you're watching, thank you for providing this content because it's so juicy. She wrote, the only way to get and stay rich is not to be stupid with money. So like her mindset around spending money on Starbucks is that it's a stupid way to spend money. And I automatically contest that because for certain people, Starbucks makes them happy. And so if something makes you happy, that is never something that is a stupid way to spend your money. You should always be spending money on things that bring you joy, things that make you happy. That is how you raise your vibration. That's how you stay in the flow of abundance. And I will beg to ask this person if that's their mindset, are they making money in their boutique? Probably not. They're, here's the thing, you've gotta realize that you are a mirror. So when you marry, mirror, mirror, when you mirror out how you're feeling, you're gonna get that back from customers, you're gonna get it back from family members, you're gonna get it back from your kids, right? You know, if you have kids, you know this, right? When you're having a really rough day, your kids seem to also be like off the handle, right? Kids are highly, highly sensitive. They're very, especially if you're a mom, right? A dad, you're so connected with that kid, literally umbilical cord style. They're gonna feed off your energy, okay? Same thing with customers. They're obviously not as sensitive because they're not your blood. But if you are have the mindset of spending money is stupid, that, um, the only way to stay rich is not by being stupid with money. I guarantee you, ready for this? I guarantee you Bill Gates has been stupid with money. I guarantee you Jeff Bezos is like stupid with money, like dumb, like he spends money investing. If you don't know who Jeff Bezos is, he's the CEO of Amazon. I guarantee you he puts money into things that are so dumb, okay? The guy that runs Tesla, what is his name? Who can help me? 
um, the Tesla guy. He is trying to go to space. Okay, he's like literally building spaceships to go to space. If that's not being stupid with your money, I don't know what is. It's, but that's fun for him. Okay, so this is my point is when you, Elon Musk, thank you, Kylie. When you say, oh, that's being stupid with money, you immediately block yourself from making any more money. Immediately, okay? This is what you have to understand. So the minute you put that energy towards money, you're blocking it from coming. So if you're saying it's too expensive, oh, the only way to get rich is to do this, whoa, big time mindset block, okay? So I wanna shift your energy and I want money to be fun because money has become very stressful for people, right? You think, oh, I haven't made money in my boutique, so I'm doing something wrong, okay? You're not. It takes time to build a business, period. Current vibration, yes. Here's the thing. I just interviewed someone on the podcast today. It's coming out next week. And her takeaway was that your energy is your currency, okay? Cameo, you agree. Cameo's like, yes, yes, yes. Um, because this is what it is. The more energy you put out that's positive, the more you'll get back that's positive. The more you put out that's negative or that's too expensive or I'm worried about money. Oh, you, I'm being stupid with money. That's when you block it. You literally put the hand up and you're like, nope, no more money can come my way. Nope, I'm not gonna spend money on Starbucks because that's stupid, right? Money flows in, money flows out. Exactly, exactly. Now, obviously there's ways to spend and invest and save and like, let's be real, okay? But you have to realize there is always more money out there to be made, always. The minute you start thinking, oh, there's not enough for me, there's not enough for her. I get this a lot with boutique owners. They say, um, oh, do you think that the, the market's too saturated? Like there's too many boutiques. No, not at all. There's never gonna be enough because you're different, I'm different, we're all selling different stuff, we have different ideal customers. And when we know that, we also know that there's enough to go around. There's plenty of money to circulate. It certainly is circulating outside around us, right? So how do we bring more of that into us? It's by getting in alignment with what it is we love, selling clothes, and feeling really good about it more often. How often can you start to feel better, okay? And I will, Cameo this week challenged me. She was like, Emily, you look really drained. Like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I've been giving a lot. Like, I've been, I've been working a lot this month. I've been traveling a lot. And all this week, all I've been doing is thinking, what is going to be fun for me? What is gonna make me feel good? And that's what I've been doing. And I look a lot better than I did on Monday. <laughs> and that's the thing, is for me, I'm like, okay, I need to take a bath at night. I need to knit, I've been knitting. I went to a yoga class this morning. I got a massage, all of those things, aligned so that I can feel better so I can come on here and like bring the energy right because the way I was feeling Monday I was like oh, I couldn't do a live right now if I wanted to so your energy is your currency period end of story you're gonna hear it multiple times over the next couple months your energy is your currency if you feel bad your boutique's probably doing bad okay so the too expensive thing oh my god okay that's a reason why you're not making money in your boutique. You have some kind of money mindset block. Another money mindset block I see, the second thing, is just not charging enough and or you run sales all the time. This came up on our call last night for Six Figure Boutique Blueprint. Someone said, I really wanna like do something on a snow day, but I feel like I have to run a sale. And I was like, but that's just a mindset block. Like, that's just a block. You don't have to run a sale. You have to show up, like show up, post some stuff, like do like a, hey, here's my top five items, or hey, here's some new stuff I'm excited about, or hey, here's some oldies but goodies I'm excited about, right? The energy that you put into that will sell it. And when you think, oh, I have to run a sale, or oh, I can't charge 3X, I can only go 2X, or everything has to be in the $30 range, you are limiting yourself and how much money you can make, period. Half of it is mindset, half of it is just straight math, okay? If you're selling things for $20, $30, that's like your general price range for everything, girl, you have to sell so much stuff to make a solid chunk of money, okay? You just have to know that. The math of retail is that we make money from our products, period. We sell things, we make money. And that leads me into my third 
tip. You guys are loving this. I'm seeing your comments. I love you. I love you. I'm going to come back to your comments. I'm just on a roll. So I'm going to keep going. The third thing here is relating to that charging enough, relating to running sales. We need to have a conversation about the word profitable. Like it's, I hear people use the word profitable in the most weird ways. Okay. Let's be very clear. Okay. Teachable moment right now. Profitable means that, so if your business is profitable, let's start with that. If your business is profitable, what that means is that after you've had money come in, so your revenue, then you've taken your expenses out. Okay. So like what people would call their overhead, which is anything from payroll, rent, um, insurance, things like that. When you minus that out, whatever's left over, that's your profit, okay? So if you wanna say, I'm a profitable boutique, it means basically that your, how much money you're making as a top line business is more than what you're spending. So your profit could be $2, it could be $200, it could be $2,000, it could be $200,000, okay? So here's the deal. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. I talked about you in my podcast this week. Do you hear me? Do you guys listen yet? Brian came to the magic meetup with Brittany, his wife. There, who else here? Give me a comment. Do you work with your spouse in your boutique? Because I found that a lot of people work with their spouse. And Greg did not slam the door. Our doors are just really loud here. <laughs> um, so tell me if you work with your boutique. Uh, your husband, your partner, your spouse, whatever. Love it. Um, so I wrote down in my notes, let's talk about what profitable versus actually profitable is. Okay. Because I think that's where we're getting screwed up is we're saying like, oh, I just want to be profitable. Well, number one, if you want to be profitable, you have to be charging enough and you have to have that margin, right? You have to have the like, difference between your wholesale and your retail needs to be enough to then take the chunks of the expenses out, right? So at the end of the day, you have a profitable business. So when people say to me, how can I be more profitable? Easy. One, charge more margin. How much more margin room can you get? How much higher can you charge prices? And how much lower can you get that cost to be, right? And then second to that, how tight can you keep your expenses? And again, this is not me being like, oh, never spend money. But this is me saying like, do you really need the velvet rug? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But like there are certain things where you're like, oh my gosh, I want to spend money in that because I know it's going to build my brand. I know it's going to make me stand out. I know it's going to be a big, big thing in my business that I need to spend money on. I need to go to a, an apparel show. I'm ready for that. You know, things like that so good to spend money on. But at the end of the day, also, you have to realize that there are some things that I think people spend money on unnecessarily, right? So where can you go through your profit and loss statement? You can do a profit and loss every single month. And I do this because I'm like imagining reading the chart. <laughs> That's how my brain works. I'm very visual. So imagine reading the chart and going down that profit and loss and saying like, does that look on point? Am I paying too much for that event? Maybe I can negotiate a lower price for that event. Can I negotiate a lower rent cost? You know, I have some women that work with me that are like, I really negotiated my rent and I pay like nothing, you know, and nothing is whatever. So there are ways where like, you know what? Go ahead and negotiate. You should, you should always be negotiating if you can, right? So that's just good business. Um, so that's the thing, you guys. I feel like so many of you are getting caught up in this, like, it's too expensive, da, da, da. I see some questions. Let me jump back in some questions. What is really resonating with you? I'd love to hear in your comment, what's resonating with you that you need to, like, adjust? Because I think that is, I want to be able to, like, coach you a little bit here for a minute. Um, because I think a lot of you need just a little bit of, a, like, a, you know, chiropractic adjustment here with money. A lot of husband's help. I love that. So cool. So cool. Um, so many of you do. Um, you love the podcast this week. Thanks, Jen. I love it too. It was, I feel like it was really good. Do you let your employees see your invoices? Um, oh, Daisy, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's okay to see, let your, I mean, if you have employees who you're open and honest with, yeah, let them see your invoices. 
Or, you know, I, for one, think it's good to, on your invoices, write the retail prices that you want, um, you want, you know, your employees to price things at. But I also, if you're concerned that they're going to, like, go and start another boutique or something like that, you can always have them sign, like, a non-disclosure agreement or something that says, like, some kind of privacy agreement, something like that. All those templates, guys, are online. Just Google, like, employee privacy agreement or employee non-disclosure, things like that. Yeah, Sherry, you're like a million trillionaire. You have so much energy. You're welcome, Courtney. You're loving that. Okay, love it, love it. Okay, everyone's loving this. Okay. Um, yes, my problem is likely overspending that profit. Yeah, most of you are overspending. I'll be very honest, most of you are overspending. You're, go you're saying, I'm gonna, and I talked about this on today's podcast, you are saying like, oh, I'm reinvesting into my business. No, no. You really shouldn't be spending more than 20 or 30% of your total revenue on reinvesting in inventory. You shouldn't be, like, you know, honestly, that also depends on your margin. I'm giving you guys like very rough estimates of things. I don't know your specific situation. Let's be very clear about that too. Um, Cause I feel like people often will like take what I say and be like, well, you said that. And like, I say that with like an asterisk of like, I don't know your situation, but I do know that if you're making a thousand dollars a week and then you're spending another thousand dollars the next week on inventory, you're doing it wrong. Like you don't, don't do that. Okay. Um, so yes, many of you are overspending and you need structures. You need systems in place that, that help you avoid that. You need a budget, okay? You need a budget. Um, oh, you work with your mom. I love that. Um, okay. I'm really struggling on some items to price at 3X. When I calculate, the price looks more... I, I hate this when I can't see comments. Sorry, Dana. Let me just open my... My higher price items are really only two to 2.5, but my cheaper items are three. So you have to understand what your blended average is. So um, we talk about this in my in Six Figure Blueprint, but you have to get to the point where you understand basically like what your, so you take your units, then you take your, um, take how many units you've bought or sold, bought, bought really, if we're figuring out initial margin, take how many units you've bought, times it by your margin, and like get a blended. It's a little more complicated than that, but <laughs> not doing a good job. Basically, if you have some things that are two, two X, and you have some things that are three, you have to figure out what the blended is, and you really need to be at a 55% a IMU, which is about a 2.6 or 2.7, after all your discounts. So you have to realize that when you, if you're only getting a 2.5 margin, really you can never mark things down. So all of you that are like, I'm running sales, I'm doing an end of the season thing, da da da, you can't afford it. That's, that's why I talk about 3X because honestly you guys, if you worked for a corporate retailer like I did for seven years, okay, I was a merchant in corporate retail. When you work in corporate retail, you never plan to sell out all your units. You just don't, okay? you plan to sell about 50% of your units at full price, and then you plan scaled markdowns. If you turn faster than that, you need more inventory. If you turn slower, then you need to mark it down sooner. But hopefully the rest of your assortment, you don't really wanna mark it down sooner or mark down more stuff. Then you get in trouble and you don't get your bonus. <laughs> so like, you need to understand that you're not really, the goal is not necessarily to sell everything at full price. And when you mark at 2.5x, you don't give yourself breathing room to mark things down, okay? Sorry, I'm trying to pull this up. Um, it's not really working. I can't see your comment, Dana. If I don't get to your comment here, I'll come back and I'll like... Um, I make my products up on 2.5 and normal price items. Like, I just... I, you don't use... Don't do online strategy. So you need an online strategy. Here the, here's the thing. So Kylie, 
When you struggle with a buying strategy, what I think you are actually saying is you're struggling understanding who your ideal client is. You don't know who you're actually buying for, and that does take a little bit of time. You do wanna buy what you love, you do wanna buy what you're excited about. The first six months are really a lot of trial and error. Like I had someone post in the Facebook group, oh, it's been a month and I haven't gotten a sale. And I'm like, babe, like sometimes it just takes time. You know, if you have ever heard my story, the very first event I did in the fashion track which was a preppy Boston nautical stripes, like super cute boutique. Think J. Crew plus Anthro plus like H and M because we had some basics. Okay, that was my boutique, the fashion truck. The very first event I did where I was like, I'm gonna crush it. It was a motorcycle week, like Laconia Bike Week, right in New Hampshire, with a bunch of motorcycle dudes. What? Talk about not knowing your ideal customer. I sat there and like wanted to cry every single day in my truck that I just poured money into, poured my heart in, stayed up late every freaking night getting this boutique ready. And then like no one came in. And like we were across from the Hells Angels of Maine, no joke. We were across from like a barbecue person. Like I was like, why am I here? Oh my God, like, oh my God. But I was like, I need to stay. I stayed until Wednesday. I think we have, I think we got there Sunday. Stayed until Wednesday. And literally on like Monday, I applied for this market that was happening. Everyone was like, you should sign up for this market. You should, and I was scared. I was like, I don't know, it's so expensive. I don't have much money left. Money mindset. I was really caught up in it. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Should I sign up? Should I sign up? And we applied, got in, and was I was like, buy, buy bike week. I think it made like a hundred dollars and I had paid so much money to be there we had, I had gotten a house to stay in because it was an all-day everyday thing it was a disaster okay disaster capital letters lots of exclamation points it was terrible so we went Sunday to this event it was all-day market in in Boston and we crushed it like I was like oh my god all these people love it these people are our ideal clients like it was just like suddenly it was that moment. And I think if you have had a boutique long enough, you've had these moments where you're like, oh my God, like these people just get me. Like whether it's like your first $500 day, your first thousand dollar event. Like I think we made $2,400 that day. And I was like, I am rich. Like I am so rich. This is like the best day of my life. Like I was just like living for it. I was exhausted. I was sweaty. I think I smelled like it was so gross. It was June. We were in the truck. We had like two fans. I was like, oh my God, dying. But I was pumped. And it's like, you just have to hold out for that moment. Okay. And I, I mean, to be honest with you, I had been working on the business since January. I had moved home with my parents in March and this was June. So like, yes, it was only like my first, like my second ish event. But I mean, I had been working on that business, building a truck with my dad, like designing the stuff, getting the merchandise, take, like I was doing the, the stuff. Okay. And that was one good event. It, it took me a while to really get more events and get steady and get myself up to 20, 30, $35,000 months in the truck, but like it took that first month of being uncomfortable, making decisions that were hard. Literally, I had to call the police to leave the bike week because the bike week people wouldn't let me leave. They were like trapping me in my spot in a huge truck with a car. It was borderline dangerous, okay? I should write about that in my book, but I had to go through those uncomfortable moments and I had to, and like, even then, even when we made the, all that money on that weekend, still there were items that didn't sell. I had kids clothes, I had pillows, I had like, I had fascinators. Like there were things that didn't work and it took me a while to figure that out. That's why I teach because I'm like, don't make the mistakes I did. I made four years of mistakes, <laughs> got better, it got easier, but you have to go through the tough stuff as a new business owner to get to the really good stuff. And a lot of people just don't stick it out. A lot of people don't get the education that they need. A lot of people don't learn the stuff that they need to know. And so, you know, this is where, this is where I come in. This is where I'm like, okay, let me teach you. Oh my gosh, so many questions. Um, Valerie, you, <laughs> Elizabeth, Hells Angels are not into stripes. Definitely not, no anchors, no nautical stripes. 
Valerie asked about growing a Facebook group. Don't grow a Facebook group. Stop wasting your damn time on Facebook groups, okay? You can never run Facebook ads. It's really, if you're just starting out, please absolutely do not start a Facebook group. It is a waste of your damn time. And I'm just not even gonna apologize anymore for being honest about that. Um, it's a waste of time. Brandy, your new storefront opens. Yay, congratulations. Hi, Anne. Okay, all right, I'm gonna comment back if I didn't get to you, sorry. I usually buy two units. Whoa, buy more, girl. Um, you do make money when you buy. Absolutely, Georgia. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Kylie. I said get rid of your group. But if you have an engaged group, use it. If you have dead groups, dump it. Maybe I should make that a, a little meme or something. Engaged groups are good. Um, okay. Amazing. Amazing. I love you, Jen. Jen, you should come back and work with me. You have more programs. Um... I feel like I'm wasting money. Yes, work from a page. Gotta shot that. Yeah, yeah. I, groups, listen, if you have an engaged group and it's doing well and like you love it and it's like your jam and you're like, I'm loving my group, it feels so good, it feels so aligned, keep your group, okay? But if you're like, I started a group, it sucked, then I opened another one and it's just like struggling to build, like anything that's hard, stop doing it. Any, like in your whole life. Just, that's like life advice, okay? Um, okay, whoa. Market always pumps my clients when I get home. They're like, what do you have for me? Sean, I love that. So maybe, Sean, you need to like pretend to go to market more. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, so, okay, I'm going to have to reply to some of you guys. Um, I'm going to reply to some of you guys via text because I can't. I, I can't, I'm having like a lot of trouble seeing this stuff. So let me just, um, let me look at my computer here. I feel like I constantly need to buy new items because I'm almost selling out of each item. I don't want my inventory to get stale or my customers to get sick of stuff. So Ashton, if you're selling out of things really quickly, a couple things to check in with. One, can you charge more? Um, you can charge more, it will sell a little bit slower, but you should still work through the units if they're, if it's a good style. Okay. So where can you, where can you actually make a little bit more money? So you slow down your turn and everyone's like, Oh my God, Emily's telling us to sell slower. Yeah, I am. You know, there was a point when I was at Abercrombie and Fitch where we literally reticketed units in 163 stores because they were selling too fast and we weren't going to have enough inventory through the Christmas season. So we reprinted tickets and we had 163 stores reticket hats. I think it was gloves that were running out. We couldn't get more because they were all like hand dyed. They were all custom and they take weeks to dye the knits and, and it, regardless. We just couldn't do it. And so we reticket everything and charged five more dollars for all of it. So we made more money. We slowed our turn down. Our turn rate, or your turn rate is how quickly you're selling through items, okay? If you take in my courses, you know about turn or sell through, I call it stock to sales. Um, kind of the same number, kind of different. But the idea is that how quickly are you turning through your units? Um, that's something you wanna think about. So Ashton, you could charge a little bit more to slow things down. Or if you're selling out, maybe it's time to buy more units. If you feel like, you know what, Emily, my prices are good. I'm in a good place. Like I feel like I'm charging where, where they should be. Maybe it's time to buy a little bit more. Buy a pack or two. Go slow. Start to build that. Clearly you have people, you have the demand. So why not, right? Um, Jennifer says, I'm on board with buying a truck or building one, but my husband is not. He says, make a profit first. Um... I would like somewhat agree. I don't think it's very smart to open a new location when you don't have the location where you are doing really well. You want to, I think it's really important and this is just what I believe, but I think it's important to be able to self fund your growth. So not take on investors, not take out more loans. You know, if you, if you need to take out a loan for, you know, you're like, well, I know I'm going to make it back and I just need capital right now. Okay, like I get it, right? But I find that people wanna grow way too fast before they've actually proven that they love what they're doing and that like, and a truck is really specific. It doesn't work for every location, you guys. You have to realize that. Trucks are not for everywhere. They're not for everyone. They're very physical. You're away nights, you're away weekends. If you have kids, might not be right for you, you know? Um, oh. 
Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Going through branding. Okay, cool. I feel like a lot of these... Okay, I'm gonna respond to a lot of these via text. Um, I do wanna let you guys know two things, really important. One, we have space left in the retreats. I would love to meet you and spend the weekend with you in March, March 22nd to the 24th, Rich Retailer Retreat here in Austin. Second important thing is I have decided to uh, run another round of Boutique Basics Bootcamp live with me. So we're gonna be sending out more information. It won't run for another like week or two. You'll get more info, but I want you to comment with your email below if you're interested in taking Boutique Basics Bootcamp. It's my basically like my beginner course and I suggest everyone take it um, because we go through all this stuff, retail fundamentals, we go through pricing structure, we go through ideal customer, we go through how to launch. It's perfect for you if you're just starting out or you're thinking about starting out and, um, or even if you've been in business up to like a year or two and you feel like you're still struggling, it's just a really good course to like reset and get all the fundamentals correct. Because what I find is most often people just get going and then they're like, wait, I feel like I missed some things. And my book is great about giving you that fun, like the basics, basics. The course takes all of that really a lot farther. Um, so comment below with your email. So we'll get you on a wait list and let you know when that comes out but I'm really excited. I'm gonna be running it live, so I'm gonna be in it. If you already are in it for some reason, um, because you have, um, if you've already like taken it self-study, we're actually gonna open it up to you guys at a really reduced rate so you can jump on calls with me because I'm gonna do some calls during it and do office hours and all that stuff. I'm gonna be live in it. Um, so I see you guys commenting, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna add you guys to the email list. Love it. Five months in business. Lucia, definitely take the course. Consider taking it. Amory, definitely. Amory, leave your email um, so we have it. Karen, we're going to email you. Karen Shaw Smith. We got some stuff for you. Um, okay, Tiffany says the boot camp rocks. It does. I love. You guys, just so you know now, I only have four ways to work with me. I have Boutique Basics Boot Camp. That's for you just starting out. Then you graduate. You go to Six Figure Blueprint. Then after that, you'll get to High Vibe Mastermind, and then after the Mastermind, one-on-one. -on -one. And you either can go through the whole path, or maybe you're already way far ahead and, and you're ready to work in the Mastermind. You're ready to work you know, with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I recommend everyone go through Boutique Basics Bootcamp, BBB. Um, is the retreat a good idea if you're less than a year in business? Yeah, absolutely. The retreat's for anyone. It's not like, the retreat's a little bit different. If you took my um, retail money mindset course, that's what it's more, it's more of like my mindset work. It's more of deep inner work. Um, it's not necessarily about like, let's look at your numbers. It's much more about like, let's work on your life. Let's help you feel better. Let's help you leave feeling excited about your business. It's like a reboot, a reset for your life. Um, so email us if you have more questions. The retreat is gonna be freaking awesome. It's gonna be honestly the most intimate way to work with me in person that probably will I'll ever do. Um, so if you wanna come and hang out with me for a weekend, this is the way to do it. <sighs> okay, I have a full time job on top of my boutique. Yeah. Rachel, yeah, Boutique Basics Bootcamp is self-paced. Yeah, and, and anytime you take a course with me, you get you have access to the content for a lifetime. You have it forever, so you can always go back. You can always, um, you know, if you wanna log into the calls, great. If you can't, that's okay too. You still have access to it forever. So you can go self-paced. I find that when people take it live, they actually do the work. They actually like show up for the calls. They like move through the work really well. Um, so I like to run it live for that and you get to talk to me. We do group, we have three group calls. So you'll get to like jump on the phone with me, ask me whatever your question is. We'll get to like talk in real life, not just through a screen. Um, so we'll send out more info. I got, I have all of you guys gorgeous on the list. We'll, we'll put you on the, the wait list, but, um, I love you guys have a really good Wednesday. It's hump day. 
Let's get into the weekend. Let's sell lots of stuff. Let's make lots of friends and make lots of money. Bye.